Doctor, we're ready if you uh, kindly uh, share the presentation. Okay, it works. It works. Okay. Okay. Um, I hope you can see the screen. Does it work? Uh, I hope everybody can. Yes, it works my... well. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Good, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my dear friends, colleagues. It's my great pleasure to share our study and uh, viewpoints with you on such a good webinar platform. Uh, as we all know, since January this year, COVID-19 has been impacting global trade and economy. Of course, international shipping and the port industry was unavoidably affect, affected. So today I just uh, uh, make uh, deliver my presentation titled uh, in Overview of Impact of COVID-19 on International Shipping and Port Industry. Um, my presentation today consists of uh, six parts, namely uh, impact on the world economy, impact on liner and dry bulk uh, sh shipping, impact on China's ports, AI's findings, questionnaire survey, uh, and the perspectives. So the first part is impacting on the world economy. This is a projection made by IMF in its latest quarterly World Economic Outlook. The right uh, two columns shows us the difference between the projections IMF made in October 2019 and January 2020. Obviously, in October 2019 and January 2020, sorry, obviously the projections of world ec economy in 2020 were all declined. If the pandemic can be controlled this year, year 2021 may witness considerable rebound. Uh, we will hope that uh, the pandemic can be controlled within this year. And last slide showed the situation in advanced uh, economies, and uh, this one indicates the change in emerging market and developing uh, economies. It seems that the effect on developing economies is a little bit milder than that on developed countries. Uh, National People's Congress of China concluded last week. Maybe for the first time in recent years, our Prime Minister did not announce an official goal for this year's GDP growth, which also demonstrated the impact on China's and global macro economy. And uh, this slide show us the projections of world trade volume. Trade, both goods and services, are expected to be badly affected. So far, there is still no vaccine to prevent COVID-19. Therefore, the contraction of economy and world trade would be even larger if more stringent containment measures are necessitated by a wider spread of the virus around the world. The future is still full of uncertainty. The second part focuses on the impact on liner and dry bulk shipping. Uh, because of Chinese badly affected logistics system and low demand, many container lines suspended liner services from China in the early stages of the COVID-19 outbreak. The proportion of suspended capacity of major container lines relating to China's export reached over 50% in February. Chinese enterprises have resumed work and production orderly since March. Idle container ship capacity gradually declined. World is experiencing a significant outbreak of COVID-19 along with idle capacity gradually rebound. And uh, in, in China, usually we separate uh, the whole period into at least uh, two phases. Phase one, the focal point is in China. And you can see that uh, about in the end of, sorry, 
about in, in the end of March, uh, China has almost controlled the situation. So phase two, we, we think that the pandemic affect around the world. So here you can see our phase one and phase two. And on, on this slide, we can see that major Chinese containerized cargo for by more than 15 in the first two months of 2020. And the work reception has been launched across China since mid-February. And uh, so far, the reception of work in China uh, is very good. And work and production are gradually getting back to normal levels. And in China, I mean, around country, all uh, provinces and uh, cities encourage the development of business, and big and small sizes, both. And uh, in this slide, we, we can see the China containerized freight index CCFI uh, dropped significantly. And with the sub-index for South America route leading the four, benefited from the suspended capacity, CCFI fractured above the level of same period last few years though it went down a lot. The dry bulk market in 2020 started pooling, influenced by the typical seasonal Chinese New Year dip, reduced the demand and disrupted logistics caused by measures taking China to contain the COVID-19 outbreak. BCI bottomed out in late February and strengthened as Chinese activity gradually uh, returned. However, COVID-19 caused increasingly widespread lockdown of economic activity around the world. WTI crude oil futures prices fell below zero on April the 20th, and the rates have weakened again. Poor market sentiment impacts demolition. Scrapping in, this, in the year to date is well above the same period last year and is forecast to increase further. And the recent week, sorry, the recent, the recent week of uh, freight rates and uncertain outlook slow down uh, fleet growth. And uh, China's manufacturing PMI rebounded in March as COVID-19 situation eased in China. The global PMI uh, came in at 39.8 in April and uh, uh, 7.5 points down from March and 10.6 uh, points down from a year ago, with over five weeks of national, na nationwide lockdown to counter COVID-19, India's manufacturing activity contracted at its sharpest pace in April, plunging to 27.4 from uh, 51.8 in the preceding month of March. Iron ore shipments impacted less by COVID-19. Top four mines reported few, uh, the fewer the first quarter iron ore shipments, citing bad weather and poor maintenance. And uh, the third part, I just uh, prepared uh, quite a few slides show us the impact on China's port. Okay, and uh, according to the statistics released by China Ports and Harbor Association, in the first quarter of 2020, container volumes of major Chinese ports declined 20.5% year on year. Meanwhile, the overall cargo throughput declined 4.6% compared to the same period last year. The contraction was mainly because of the tough international trade situation. And uh, since the end of March, we will see the uh, situation has been becoming better. And uh, comparing with the uh, previous slide, in this slide, I just add the situation in the month April. Um, and we, we can see that the throughput volume containers decreased by 7.8%, uh, and that of all cargoes decreased by 2.3% year on year. And uh, our big data team also studied the impact on 
international shipping and port industry based on the IS information. In this part, I will share with you some relevant findings. Okay, since the uh, closure of Wuhan, the number of vessels calling at major coastal ports in China has generally uh, showing a downward trend in the Yangtze River Delta, and certain ports have been greatly affected, including Shanghai, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Ningbo, Zhoushan, and other ports showed a downward trend from January 21st to January 27th, and the decrease continued for uh, several weeks. Also affected by the decrease in the number of birthing vessels, the total duration of birthing at major poles declined to varying degrees uh, starting from January 21st to 27. At the same time, it was found that the average duration of each ship increased in the major port. With the outbreak of COVID-19, the number of China's coastal container ships declined sharply from January the 23rd and fell to a short-term trough on February the 1st. The number of international container ships in China's coastal area was only uh, 673, and uh, you, can, you can see that the highest point is over 850, almost uh, 900, and uh, the lowest point was only uh, 673. These uh, two tables just to show us uh, the situation of suspended and uh, a mid capacity, I mean, uh, both the capacity and the number of vessels involved. We also uh, saw the uh, suspension and omission of vessels during the worst period of, of China. And uh, also, I prepared two uh, cases show the change because of the uh, COVID-19. The left one, a liner from Guangzhou port to Port Klang. Okay. On January 23rd in the latest voyage, it took only four days to reach Port Klang, but waited at the anchorage for 11 days before birthing, of course, affected by the COVID-19. And for another uh, vessel we tracked, the blue line shows the schedule originally planned to occur at Ningbo, Xiamen, Vietnam. The red line shows the actual trace indicating that she has not actually uh, called at Xiamen. There is a change of uh, the actual voyage also affected by the COVID-19. And our team also uh, organized some uh, questionnaire survey we did distributed about 300 uh, questionnaires to our members and uh, luckily we uh, took back uh, almost uh, 300, more, more than 200 and we asked several questions to uh, our members from uh, shipping companies, port companies, forwarding companies. Okay, here just to show you some uh, situation, I mean the feedback of our respondents. Uh, nearly 90% of shipping enterprises suffer business uh, volume declines. We can see that um, about 20% to 30%, uh, sorry, uh, I mean, uh, decreased by 20% uh, to 9%. That is the feedback from about 24.3% of our uh, response. And almost all the port enterprises suffer business volume declines, which can also be seen from the previous tables. And uh, almost all ports, ports omission and uh, shipping routes cancellation. And uh, falling of market demand is the, biggest, is the biggest impact for the shipping enterprises. And uh, nearly 60% of shipping enterprises record... Uh, doctor, please, uh, if you don't mind, uh, slow down a little bit, please. Yeah, I find there's some delay maybe because of the uh, speed of the internet. 
I just try to wait for seconds. Okay, maybe you can see this slide. Okay, nearly uh, 60%, right, of shipping enterprises record work resumption rate of 90% or higher. And also over 50% uh, of port enterprises fully resumed work. So just as I mentioned, uh, the resumption of work in China, both shipping companies and the port companies are uh, very good. Okay, I just wait. Okay, most companies expected a slow uh, recovery or uh, after the epidemic. Uh, this survey was, was done uh, in February and uh, March, and uh, today's situation maybe is better than their expectation made in February and uh, March. And over 30% of shipping enterprises uh, look forward to fiscal, financial, and uh, policy uh, support. And we also collected their opinions and uh, prepared some report to the uh, Department of Transport and uh, uh, competent authorities to show the opinions from the uh, industry. And the last part of my presentation is our uh, perspectives. Uh, this curve shows the uh, world merchandise trade volume uh, predicted by WTO. And uh, you can see that the, um, the blue line just shows as merchandise uh, trade and uh, the blue dash line shows the trade uh, from year 1990 to uh, 28. And uh, the uh, orange, I think it's, it's orange, orange, dash line showed the trend of from 2011 to uh, 2018. Uh, but, you know, affected by the COVID-19, we see a very, very uh, serious job of this curve. And uh, uh, the optimistic scenario, that means maybe this uh, pandemic can be controlled just within one year. Uh, WTO expected that the, the whole situation can be recovered as early as uh, next year, I mean, uh, 2021. And if the situation is not so good, I mean, the uh, pessimistic scenario, maybe even in year 2022, uh, the recovery cannot be seen. So the impact of COVID-19 on China's logistics feeding, but the effect on global trade is immense and profound. The second perspective is more attention should be paid to the operation of carriers, especially which with higher leverage ratios. So unfortunately, we also witnessed some um, bankruptcy of shipping companies and also uh, some firing of even the leading forwarding companies of the world. Yeah, they fired a lot of uh, employees. And the COVID-19 may become a key catalyst for the upgrading of digitalization and automation in the shipping and port industry. And uh, the uh, phase four of Yangshan port is a fully automated container terminal. And during the, even the worst period, the operation in uh, phase, phase four in Yangshan port uh, was almost not affected because this terminal is uh, full automated uh, container terminal. And also, just from the uh, pandemic, we, we have found that many, many shipping companies and uh, port companies uh, pay more attention to the development of automation. And the last, we, we think that maybe the pattern or and the trend of globalization will be changed. But we think that uh, simply rewinding globalization and reshoring supply chain is neither desirable or possible. A uh, single supplier and just-in-time inventory replenishment is uh, exacerbating the pandemic situation and uh, resilient form of globalization is emerging. And the trend of global supply chain management may be uh, diversified suppliers and uh, classified inventory monitoring. Okay, because of the limitation of time, I just uh, stop my presentation here. And uh, thank you all for your attention. Uh, we think that, I think that we uh, stay together, we stay strong. Thank you all.
Thank you. successful uh, operation of the webinar and uh, furthermore um, I'm very much honored to be invited to serve as a speaker um, for the third issues after the COVID-2019. Uh, it is a, a, a kind of analysis from different angles talking about the impacts of the um, COVID-2019 for the industry. Um, I will be focusing on the maritime administration, which I would say kind of a public nature uh, administration, uh, comparing with the topics mentioned by the other speakers, which is uh, from my point of view quite uh, uh, kind of for private or commercial shipping operations. It is a big topic um, when we look at uh, the maritime administration uh, for the COVID-2019. Can I use the slides? I'm sorry. Excuse me. Can you help me to show the slides? Yes, Professor, are you ready? Uh, you can share, please. So can you see the slides now? Uh, yes, yes, Professor, we can see it. So thank you very much. So I have to, I can move on now. So uh, first of all, let us uh, let me show you uh, with some kind of uh, observations on the maritime administration during the COVID-2019. We see obviously that the trade volume shrinking down and in particular the international trade volume as many speakers mentioned before as well. So um, the finally the global supply chain has been brought down I think to some extent. And the second observation we can see is that the maritime administration is trying or its best to secure the normal shipping operations. Um, in terms of uh, the ship's operation, the seafarers, and also the port management. So the third observation um, in, we can see in behind the many actions uh, adopted by the maritime administrations and also the Ministry of Transportation, we see that uh, it's kind of, uh, we have a a uh, kind of common understanding that uh, the uh, coronavirus disease is understood as a force majeure, which means uh, uh, we can uh, use uh, flexibilities, I mean, for the maritime administrations. So the last observation from my side is that uh, we see that uh, a lot of uh, specially designed legislations and policies you know, uh, is uh, applied to support the ship operations during the disease period. So this is uh, the uh, very common observations. But of course, I have to focus on the following um, 
maritime administrations for the uh, COVID-2019. Um, first of all, we see the how to handle the, the ships at sea. You know, we uh, have uh, about 95, 94,000 ocean going vessels, according to the statistics. Um, so these all kind of vessels has to be managed, have to be managed. So, but we are suffering kind of problems that we have to um, look at the onboard operations and the management of those vessels. We have to do a survey and inspect inspections for them for uh, the normal technical conditions and the safety management. And we have to also take care of the cargo handlings, cargo operations for dangerous cargo, etc. etc. Et so all kinds of problems you know, with this. So for that purpose, that the industry and in particular the IMO and the EU and the IX, which means the International Association of Classification Societies and other national different nations, maritime nations, are using different uh, policies and also the um, legislations for that particular uh, purpose. So, due to the restriction of the time, I cannot can explain in all of them, but uh, if I can summarize, the main actions taken by different organizations, different administrations, is like that. First of all, we, they try to reduce the ship and shore interface to avoid the coronavirus disease. And this is the main purpose, the general principle as well. Yeah. And, and also, um, the maritime administrations and also organizations, they post the home survey and inspections or carry out remote survey or using alternatives. And then uh, they also try to use uh, the technical facility to do the remote law enforcement. Anyway, you know, try to reduce the ship and shore interface. And of course, it's important for the maritime administrations to implement the emergency actions through the interdepartmental corporations. And this is kind of uh, uh, summarization. Uh, if you put all together the documents, legislations, uh, circulars from different organizations. But I would like to take this opportunity uh, to introduce to you the main actions taken by the Chinese Maritime Administration. So, first of all, the Chinese Maritime Administration simplified the procedures for the maritime operations. Secondly, the MSA, we so called Chinese Maritime Administration, they are using pra pragmatic approach to do the maritime administrations. The pragmatic approach means they are using kind of uh, or not alternative uh, and also the flexibilities uh, for the maritime safety administration. The Chinese, thirdly, the Chinese maritime administration are using remote monitoring system for the on scene, I mean, for the on scene inspection for ships, for ports, for dangerous cargo operations, and also for the ship co uh, shipping companies. So they are using drones and uh, the electronic facilities, technologies, to do such a kind of uh, remote supervision. The fourth 
approach that the Chinese MSA is doing is that the online education, online examination for seafarers. So seafarers, they, they don't have to go to the MSC office to do such kind of you know, business. The fifth approach for the MSC China is the using the online services for administration through, for instance, uh, the software and also the apps, you know, to help them to handle all the procedures you know, without going to the I mean, administrations. And also the Chinese maritime, the, the sixth approach is that the Chinese MSA, they are doing, uh, they uh, published the uh, guide, operational guidelines for the shipping companies, for seafarers. It is uh, a comprehensive document to establish the management for the shipping companies for the coronavirus, for ships, for seafarers, and for emergency operations as well. So it's a systematically, I mean, it, 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 uh, uh, it is a systematic solution to for the COVID. 2019. And it is also submitted to the IMO for the uh, use of the whole industry. It's quite a successful. And also the Chinese maritime administration is uh, uh, cooperating with the other administrations in China, with, for instance, the customs, immigrations, and uh, also the uh, uh, health organizations in China, so to handle, you know, the, uh, the COVID issues in China. So these are the, um, the examples or the complete actions taken by Chinese MSA for the purpose of the COVID-19. Uh, so next, I would like to introduce uh, the current action for seafarers. It is actually a quite big issue um, that because we, uh, Guru Gray, we have uh, about uh, 150,000 seafarers, um, you know, to be changed because uh, they are serving on the ships now. For China, at the end of uh, May this, this year, we have about 10,000 seafarers who have to be uh, changed. So the problem is that uh, most of, some of them are working on board vessels for a long time. Some of them are working, uh, have been working on board vessels more than 15 months. So you can imagine that uh, the, uh, such a long time uh, service is bringing the um, healthy uh, dangers to them. So for instance, also kind of a psychological problems for them as well. So it's a big issue again. So this is uh, the uh, main problems, extended services. And uh, the relevant problems are, for instance, uh, the validation of the certificates and the examination and the, uh, for instance, uh, the repatriation, et cetera, et cetera. So we have lots of problems as well. So that's why the industry is acting, you know, by, led by IMO, ILO, and uh, ITF, and also different nations as well. So uh, the main action, if I can also summarize is that uh, we are doing the different in different maritime nations the relevant authorities and administration are coordinating to facilitate the uh, crew changes and uh, for the other issues as i mentioned uh, for example the uh, examination and uh, the for instance uh, certificates etc cetera, etc cetera, and then it can be postponed as well. 
So we have a lot of uh, documents to, for, 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 for reference and for the facility of uh, the uh, crew management. So this is uh, a quite uh, uh, important issue in that case. But in China, in our case, uh, the Chinese maritime administration is uh, uh, one of the leading authority to take care of the crew exchanges, crew changes. Um, uh, the administration has to coordinate different, as I said, the departments, the customer, the immigration, and also the local government, as a hospital, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's quite a successful. We continue. We are continuing to change the crews. So it's quite a successful now. But still, we have a big challenge ahead of us, not only China, but also the other relevant countries as well. I mean, CPR supplying countries as well. Because uh, that uh, due to the international traveling is almost a kind of uh, you know, restricted. So it's difficult to repatriate, to change the crew members internationally. And also they, they cannot you know, have the flight even. So that is the problem. So we have to solve this problem for the uh, uh, safe operation of this industry. This is the second uh, 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 sphere. And the third one is, uh, look, we look at uh, the port state control inspection. You know that uh, uh, we have uh, typically for safety reasons, and pollution prevention purposes as well, we have uh, the port state control inspection and also the flag state implementation or flag state control. If you look at the current uh, practices uh, done by the, uh, for instance, the Paris Memorandum of Understandings, we do still have the um, inspections, port state control inspections, but the number and also the extent of the port state control inspection is reduced. So that is a problem. Um, for that purpose, the different uh, organizations different uh, uh, memorandum of understandings for port state control inspection have issued the, I mean, the documents or guidelines. For instance, the, for certification for personal issues, the port state officer uh, have to uh, carry out, a, I mean, the, the, the guidelines. So to summarize, Summarization for such kind of action is basically the port state control inspection is now using the pragmatic approaches as well. So which means that uh, they can accept a kind of uh, flexibility or alternative or delay or postponement. And also, for instance, they can use the kind of uh, exemptions as well. Secondly, the action of the port state control inspection uh, is now relying more on the national inspections. So the port state control inspection stresses on the point that the inspection, safety inspection, has been mainly dominated by the national administration. And in some, port, in some port state, they are using remote ship visits. They use different, uh, I mean, technologies for that purpose. And this is uh, the current actions for the port state country. The main, very important issue for the, uh, in the maritime administrations. The last sample, if I can see, is that uh, the current action for the delayed delivery of the ships. Delivery of the ships. For that purpose, IMO, has published the circular letter so that we can use to guide the industry to handle such a situation for the delayed delivery, delivery of the ships. So that is uh, the current, the review of the current actions, I mean, for the uh, main issues in after, sorry, after the um, COVID-2019. But my personal comment is that maybe people each would like to ask that what is the future? I mean, the safety standards, 
the safety level of the ship operation should be upgrading or downgrading. So my point is that uh, according to the history or the current situation, that uh, the objectives and of the strategies for safety of the industry is still remaining. Because the, one of the reasons is that the maritime administration mainly depends on the risks at sea. So the focusing on, they are observing, they are evaluating the risks at sea. So they are, that is the, 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 the future, it can be useful for the prediction of the future of the safety standards. So if I can outlook for future, I would say, um, the COVID-2019 is influential and it is also very important for the sustain, sustainable development of the shipping industries. And they could be dealt with as kind of a new normal, which means that it will exist for a long time, maybe. And uh, the second possibility for future is that uh, we have to enhance the quality inspections and it will be put it into a system like ISN, you know, code and uh, the shipping companies, the ships have to establish the procedures, documentation for that purpose. The third outlook is that uh, the whole industry will be affected, you know, with more maritime registrations operational procedures etc etc and also in for future for the modern maritime administration is that uh, we can use probably more alternatives more equivalency and also flexibilities and of course lastly as many experts said that uh, we may use more digitization and intelligence for future so the strategies. Oh, uh, before the strategies, I would uh, uh, make kind of uh, further comments as well. We are facing challenge, challenges. I mean, in front of uh, the uh, COVID 2019, it's, it's still going on. But uh, from the maritime administration point of view, side, I think we have three key problems now. First, when it will be ended. Second, um, how it will affect the safety level or the risks of the shipping operations, I mean, for safety. Which means, uh, we, yeah, we are using now flexibility, we are using the um, alternatives. But uh, still we have a concern that uh, the safety level, how can we maintain the safety level or the, to, to control the risk safety? The last point is, as I said just now, that is uh, the seafarers. How to accomplish the exchange, sorry, the change of seafarers for such an uh, amount of seafarers? such a large quantity of seafarers, we still have to take more actions. So this is uh, very important um, for the sustainability of uh, the shipping industry. Sorry. And so that uh, it comes to the, almost to the last uh, slide of the, my presentation that uh, we should use kind of uh, strategies. Okay, input it, sorry, put it into the ISN code so that we establish the documents, and the procedures, and the records. And also it's very important for most of the countries, I think uh, we have to uh, involve more departments for the, I mean, uh, purpose of combating um, the uh, COVID-2019. And in many, many countries, MSA as uh, a management administration is not the unique, the only organization, only department to take care of this issue. And also the third point is that strategies to move, 
we, we, we should promote the electro, electronic and online and remote administrations. So we use the modern facilities, modern technologies to do such administration. And the lastly, as I mentioned before, we have to use the digitization and the intentional technology as well. So that is uh, the main uh, part of my presentation. Uh, once again, I should say thank you very much for your patience. And uh, the, uh, this is a big topic. Um, I mean, to talk about uh, the measures, to the me analysis and the measures for COVID-2015 from the public administration point of view, uh, it, it's a larger topic. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I have to stop and uh, uh, please comment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you so much, Doctor. Actually, it's a very uh, important issue and its impact. COVID-19 impact uh, on uh, employees in this sector. We should put it in consideration. I thank you so much. Thank you. And we uh, are ready for any uh, questions. And uh, if, anyone ha if anyone has any question, please send it. And we'll uh, answer it later. Now let's take a rest and we'll be back by 12.30. And we have two sessions, two other sessions. Thank you, let's take a break and we'll be back after the break.
Yes, doctor, how are you today? Okay. I hear you well. Yes, please. Yes. Okay, um, hello uh, everyone. Uh, I am Wang Jiabing. I'm the secretary of the uh, I'm sec secretary of the president office. You know, I'll help uh, Madam Gu in making a presentation. I'm the secretary of the president office. So, uh, uh, so sorry, I can hear the, the voice of translator. Uh, could, you, could you please mute that? So distinguished on, uh, host, uh, dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good day. First of all, uh, uh, we shall thank the organizer, the Arab Academy for Science and Technology and Maritime Transport <clears throat> for your uh, great efforts. Excuse me, sir. Uh, would you please hold on? Hold on for a second, please. Okay. Hello? Hello? Hello, yeah. Shall we start? Yes, go on, please. Okay. Uh, so, good day. First of all, uh, we shall thank the organizer, the Arab Academy for Science and Technology and the Maritime Transport, for your great efforts of organizing this important webinar that serves as a valuable platform for us to exchange views and ideas on the maritime transport market. As you know that Shanghai Shipping Exchange is a government-sponsored institution jointly established by the Ministry of Transport and the Shanghai Municipal Government. We are specialized in the container transport market. To simplify, we provide the three freights, uh, the freight fighting, the freight index, and the freight transactions. So, so today we'd like to take a look into the container transport market have the outbreak of COVID-19. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, we will discuss uh, its impact on the global economy, on the international oil price, on the international container transport market, and we'll see how we can, uh, we, we, how we take countermeasures. So uh, firstly, we saw that the COVID-19 seriously strikes the world economy. On April the 14th to uh, 2020, the IMF published a new issue of World Economy Outlook that points out we have never seen such serious economic downturn after the Great Depression in 1930s. So based on the assumed scenarios that the pandemic situation in most countries will reach its peak in the second quarter of this year and then get slightly improved in the second half, IMF es estimates that the world economy will decline by 3% in 2020. For comparison, in January this year, the estimation was an increase of 3.3%. So here we see a wide gap of 6.3% between the positive 3.3% and the negative 3%. And according to an initial prediction of WTO on world cargo trade volume on April the 8th, in the optimistic scenario, the world cargo trade volume will decline by 12.9% in 2020, and then quickly bounce up by 21.3% in 2021. But in a pessimistic scenario, the world cargo trade volume will plunge by 31.9% in 2020. Doctor, uh, do you uh, do you speak? Are you talking? Because I can't hear you. Hello. 
Uh, no, I can't hear you. Um, doctor, I can't hear you after after slide number four. The the voice uh, is disconnected. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'm sorry, we're waiting. There are some uh, troubles, technical troubles uh, from China. Uh, uh, Doctor, do you hear me? Sorry for uh, this uh, inconvenient, uh, for this connection. Uh, we resume with uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Uh, Awad. Uh, doctor, excuse me, just a second, please. Uh, we are resuming with Dr. Uh, Awad um, until we fix this uh, problem. Uh, clear, doctor.
offering I offering my th sincere thanks for uh, letting me uh, make a presentation uh, in this valuable webinar about marketing of shipping services post COVID nineteen. Because of the time, I will uh, skip some of the introductions I intended to uh, to illustrate. That's a hand. Uh, shipping is the lifeblood of the global economy. Without shipping, international trade, the bulk transport of raw material, and the import export of uh, uh, our market is restricted with uh, supply and demand. Ninety, nearly ninety percent of the world trade. Uh, are transported by sea, putting in consideration uh, the bulk. Uh, Uh, the key uh, the key uh, movement of our trade is the supply and demand the more the demand exceed the more the supply will uh, increase and this is an index is this uh, industry working good or not so uh, demand on this uh, Uh, industry increase and this uh, is an, an index a good index and and vice versa if uh, the uh, demand increased so supply will also decrease this side has many industries like shipyards services in ports and many other activities we will not go deep in this i will move fast before i i before i'll talk about the covid 19 crisis that we live in to nowadays what makes the crisis very deep on the global economy in the shipping market that it's, it was synchronized with the uh, in uh, 1st of January it was synchronized this crisis was synchronized with the new environmental standards that enforced all ports and countries to uh, abide with the standard of uh, water management for uh, environmental balance second thing that from the first of january all fleets all over the world um, are restricted for the use of uh, oil that not exceed 1.5 and uh, the purification of water and it's very it has a very high cost and uh, it differs from a ship to another according to the age of the vessels and ships uh, 
uh, and one of the solutions was uh, to uh, reinstall a scrubbing um, installation to reduce the use of uh, sulfur. All of these are coming together in the same time of the crisis and that's what make it very deep. But because of the COVID-19 is more spread all over many uh, sectors in many places. So we feel that COVID-19 is the main reason for this crisis. The deep shock that happened in the demand affected on the industry. And I will start use a presentation in a very, very fast. Uh, we here talked about the shock to the world economy from COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. Now the real crisis that we face Uh, th that we reached to the point never have been reached before, even in the financial crisis in 2008. Not only that, but it exceed exceeded uh, for over 35 years, more than the Great Depression. And now we're talking about uh, another section, which is oil trade that faces, faced a lot of uh, challenges. Uh, for speculation and forecasting uh, for a scenario. We, but we have still have uh, another positive uh, have ships all over the world. We have 12,000 ship with with a volume of two mil, uh, billion ton. They transferred uh, fifty percent of these 12,000. Uh, were bulk carrier as raw materials, charcoal, and grain trade. Then we have a, a bulk industry that when it's affected, it, uh, it has an impact in, on other sectors. especially raw materials that goes uh, into industry and uh, come out as a throughput uh, of uh, products. What's our outlook for the next phase? Unfortunately, there is an uncertainty for the future. Um, despite we have an uh, optimistic 
perspective. Uh, like in, in, in China, they overcame uh, this uh, pandemic uh, more faster than the rest of the world. Uh, they have 95% of bulk industry and raw materials. Most, most uh, of the bulk industry are in China. And 95% of this industry uh, we're from Wuhan, and uh, that's a positive indication that from last March uh, everything came back as usual, and we hope uh, that uh, this uh, rehabilitation will uh, be all over the world. because this not effect affected only the bulk uh, industry, but everywhere and all the sections and in uh, the maritime transport. As, uh, as it started to take more to change crews uh, from a ship to another, uh, because they have to be checked and this affect uh, all the sector, the maritime sector. Uh, the rent, uh, the rent uh, value uh, is not actually cover the cost. Yes, uh, despite some companies will lose uh, a lot of revenues, but we are sustaining to, uh, to work and move on. Uh, now let's see some measures and precautions that some uh, countries all over the world has taken into consideration. Let me point out uh, some of these measures that has been taken with these countries, especially like France, England, let, let me say it uh, specifically, France, New Zealand, Italy, Germany, they took a bundle of precautions and measurements to facilitate companies. Uh, one of these were uh, postponing the interests paid for the fleets postponing all obligations, financial obligations for companies. Some other countries offer a direct supply to companies or to governments. And some other countries offer and supply, direct uh, supply for ships uh, and uh, companies from certain countries, and uh, which is against all conventions and agreements, but this is to face the challenge. Uh, I'll try to skip and uh, move on, so make it quickly. Uh, here, let me when I let me when I, I like when I discuss any crisis uh, to compare it with other crises, and uh, here let's illustrate the GDP the uh, GDP from ninety two to uh, twenty 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 eight years. Let's see the crisis all over the world, and we'll have the same graph on uh, the PDI the same figure will be translated for the PDI index. The world economy has a direct impact in the maritime market and move with it 
moment by moment. In the beginning of the 90s, we have we have monetary policy tightening as a result of in of inflation. Synchronized with the oil price uh, fall and shock. Then they overcame this. And uh, then the GDP was uh, 2% and then moved uh, up to 4% and then fell down by uh, 97 where we have the Asian crisis. It uh, fall down to be uh, 3% and then following a fluctuation scaled up to 5% till September 11 attacks. And the collapse in uh, the stock markets, and it uh, reached down again to 2%. And then the global GDP came up to be over 5%. And this is till 2004. And in Egypt, 2004, our GDP was the highest. Uh, percent where it was 7%. And then some movement, some corrections in movement. Uh, let's say uh, uh, some drops in uh, GDP growth until we have a his historical crisis where uh, when uh, uh, we have the global financial crisis in 2008-2009 where central banks intervene to stimulate the economy. Uh, it, uh, they overcame this crisis, but uh, unfortunately in 2010, uh, the rent values reached like $20,000 and this number, uh, we've never seen it from that uh, since then till now. At the end, we can compare between the crisis, uh, COVID crisis now, and uh, in oil structures and uh, standards, and compare it between the last crisis that happened all over the world so that you can get a result where are we now after the financial crisis and then the central banks intervened this made a correction in the movement till 2010 and then gdp growth dropped again until you uh, because of the ue sovereign debt crisis going through another crisis, which is a low growth rates in China and, and, and the crisis in China, it was around 2015, before 2015. And this is what made the maritime market uh, to, and then the market after that overcome this crisis and then we uh, faced the impact of a trade war between China and the United States. And then, uh, then we have some agreements. They start to have some agreements and, and then we were faced by coronavirus recession and uh, changing in fuel specifications and some distur disturbance in the world economy. The same figure, uh, we will uh, have the same figures in the Baltic dry index, 
with uh, we can see the fluctuation in the world uh, economy if you if we can take a quick look uh, in the last quarter of 2008 the bdi index reached 663 because of the financial crisis and nowadays it's uh, 411 that means it's a uh, it's the worst case all over the history maybe numbers and comparisons can show you that we are in a great crisis some positive indications that China uh, handled and dealed with the uh, COVID-19 to uh, overcome this crisis, uh, despite it uh, still uh, exists all over the world. And uh, it's a hor we have horrible losses all over the world. And some countries took certain measures, in, like in Egypt, Uh, in Egypt, the, we transfer 90% of our uh, essential commodities. Uh, this because it's uh, a very essential industry, uh, governmental industry. Uh, do, we, do we have uh, to take more measures? Yes. Uh, we may take more measures and facilitations for companies. If we have government uh, companies, we're not talking about public, um, private bodies, but we're talking about governmental companies. In such a crisis, we must sol solidate and come together to overcome this crisis. I'm uh, very sorry if uh, I, made it, I made it long. Um, I uh, moved quickly through the presentation, but the most important point for me was to compare this crisis by uh, the previous crisis all over the world and its impact on uh, the company and how, how in the financial crisis many uh, large and booming companies disappeared. And uh, a lot of companies after this financial crisis uh, by six months they already disappeared, they are not existing anymore. But actually by the support of our government here we are we are changing and we are facing the challenge. We are we overcome the crisis because such a crisis needs some measures and uh, and any question. Thank you so much. Dr. Young Fing. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ju Young Fing, do you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, we, we can hear you. Okay, sorry for this inconvenient. Um, we'll be back to you in uh, just uh, two, th two seconds. Sure. So are you going to start from the beginning or uh, continue? Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I will, I will continue uh, where, we, where we start. Uh, we, are, uh, we are at slide four, right? Yes. Uh, can you give me the authority for sharing the slides? Um, okay. So uh, I will continue from uh, where we stop. Sorry for the uh, network interruption. So uh, uh, first we will discuss the impact on the uh, uh, international container transport market, uh, how the uh, COVID-19 strikes the world economy. <clears throat> on April the 14th, 2020, the IMF published a new issue of the World Economy Outlook that points out that we have never seen such serious economy downturn of the Great Depression in 1930s. Based on the assumed scenario that a pandemic situation in most countries will reach its peak in the second quarter of this year and then get slightly improved in the second quarter of this year, IMF estimates that the world economy will decline by 3% in 2020. For comparison, that in January this year, the estimation was an increase of positive 3.3%. So here we see a wide gap <clears throat> of 6.3% between the positive 3.3% and negative 3%. And according to WTO's initial prediction on the world cargo trade volume on April the 8th, in the optimistic scenario, the world cargo trade volume will decline by 12.9% in 2020 and then quickly bounce up at 21.3% in 2021. But in a pessimistic scenario, the world cargo trade volume will plunge by 31.9% in 2020 and then bounce up only by 24% in the next year. So as the epidemic situation continues, given the greater uncertainty of the economy, the recent MPC and CPPCC that's the most of two important meetings in China, did not set a clear goal of GDP growth in 2020, which has rarely occurred before. Uh, secondly, we will see how the COVID-19 impact the international oil price. So far, the COVID-19 keeps spreading and all the major economies take lockdown measures that result in stagnant, stagnant activities of tourism, industry, and economy. The fuel oil prices plunged since the outbreak of COVID-19. <clears throat> and this slide shows the volatility of the fuel oil prices. So here we can see that from January to May 2020, the average prices of Singapore high sulfur fuel oil and low sulfur fuel are 239 US dollars per ton and 393 US dollars per ton, with year-on-year -year decreases of 42% and 35% respectively. And thirdly, we'll see how the COVID-19 impact the international container transport market. Firstly, we saw a sharp decrease of the container transport volume. It is estimated by the International Chamber of Shipping that in the first quarter, the world container transport volume dropped down by around 15%, and its further decline in second quarter would depend on the openness of major economies. And according to Clarkson's prediction, in 2020, the global container transport volume will be 188 million TUs with a year-on-year -year decrease of 5%, among which the transport volume of Trans-Pacific Ocean will be around 25 million TUs, while that of the Asian Europe surface will be around 23 million TUs. And secondly, we saw a prominent reduction of the carrying capacity. According to a market intelligence provider, the Alpha Liner, in early March 2020, totally 402 container ships were laid up with a capacity scale of over 2 million TUs. That's a remarkable year-on-year -year increase of 170.9%. So such laid up capacity accounts for 10. 6% of the world container fleet and is 6.6% 6 
higher than that of the previous year. Fortunately, China has made great achievements in the epidemic prevention and control in March, and the pace of work resumption speed up. The international container transport market is getting better. Port congestion is alleviated, and a sliding trend of port throughput is curbed. But as the pandemic situation in Europe and America gets worse, more container fleets were laid up in April. As of May the 11th, totally 524 container ships with total slots of 2.65 million TUs are laid up. So as a result, as a result more voyages of the European and American services are canceled. That about 30% of the sailing schedules are cut down. So in the past months, most container lines maintained their strategy of scale up uh, reduction of carrying capacity. So last week, the empty voyage on the Asia North Europe trade lanes reached the peak that over 35% voyages were canceled. It was even worse on the Asia South, South Africa trade lanes that the cancellation, cancellation proportion was close to 16%. As a, as a result, the phenomenon of serious imbalance of box flow may appear in this June. And uh, thirdly, we see, uh, fortunately, we did not see quite extreme volatility of the freight rates. So he, this is the, uh, uh, sorry, this is the uh, China Export Containerized Freight Index, a CCFI issued by our shipping exchange. Uh, here we can see that after the uh, global financial crisis in 2008, CCFI steeply dropped uh, and container lines tried to implement two GRI plans, the general rate increase plans in the second quarter of 2009 and the first quarter of 2012. But given the imbalance between supply and demand of carrying capacity, the rates kept declining through fluctuation. In 2016, as Hanjing shipping went bankruptcy, container lines started a new round of reorganization and amalgamation. The shipping market turned out to be dominated by three bigs, the 2M Alliance, the Ocean Alliance, and the Alliance. The market competition, the market competition layout changed. And after that, the container shipping market bounced up from the valley. And in the first quarter of this year, the international container transport volume touched a historic high since 2012, uh, sorry, since 2016. And under the impact of COVID-19, both supply and demand of China's export container transport market declined together with the sliding rates. So on May the 29th, the CCFI issue by Shanghai Shipping Exchange reported 839 points down 6.5% from the beginning of this year. Among them, the sub-index of the Europe trade lanes reported 1,002 points down 6.2% while the sub-index of the Mediterranean Sea trade lanes reported 1,141 points, down 10.4%. So we can see this will be another extremely tough year for shipping enterprises. So as COVID-19 keeps spreading and upgrading more or less around the world in the second quarter of this year, voyage cancellation by container lines will be a unanimous and a long-lasting practice. So let's take Musk Line as an example. This giant company is not optimistic that its shipping volume in the second quarter will decline by 20 to 25%. So it will be another extremely tough year for shipping companies. The expected earnings of a line operators are decided by the key factors like the container freight, the transport volume, the oil price, and the foreign exchanges. So this slide shows how these factors may affect the performance of AP Motor Musk line. So when we look at the future and the near future of international container transport industry, I think uh, we need the joint efforts of both government and enterprises. The impact of COVID-19 on the global economy is more serious than the financial crisis in 2009, and it now continues spreading 
and cannot be controlled in the short term. It is still too early to decide whether it can be stopped in this year, and if not, the situation may get even worse. So here we have some suggestions on the countermeasures by government. We suggest that all countries enhance information sharing. There should be one organization that can timely update and release the most updated policies and the measures of epidemic prevention and control of all countries, which are made available to all the governments and the shipping enterprises to serve as the reference in their decision-making. All governments on the earth should take a cooperative attitude on research and development of medical treatment and sharing of medical research results. And we should promote a sound development of a community of shared destiny for human beings. To maintain the economy development and people's livelihood in the fight against COVID-19, many governments have timely developed incentive policies for economy recovery. So in the maritime sector, the financial burdens on transnational shipping enterprises are lessened by reduction and exemptions like value added income uh, tax, the income tax and other taxes and dues. So for, for instance, the CMA CGM has, been, has recently been granted a national loan guarantee related to COVID-19 and received totally over 1 billion euros uh, from three banks. Uh, they are BNP Paribas, HSBC, and Societe Generale. So CMA CGM chooses to participate in the emergent loan guarantee plan of 300 billion euros offered by the French government. And Hyundai Merchant Marine and Yangming also received aid of hundreds of millions of dollars. The Chinese government lowers the port construction fee and other charges that help reduce the logistic ex expenses of foreign trade companies. In the near future, uh, the Chinese government will enlarge investment in new infrastructure, improve the, the so-called soft power or soft environment, and become further cooperative and open. Uh, firstly, China will turn from traditional port and shipping infra infrastructure to new infrastructure. For example, the 5G's technology, the ultra-high voltage grid, intercity high-speed railway and urban rail transit, the charging points of electric vehicles, the big data, the AI, and internet of industry. And secondly, China will consolidate the soft power of shipping and improve business environment. So this slide shows the efforts of the Chinese government in, a pro in progressing of the business environment since 2015. And China will keep simplifying policies and deregulating and concentrate on better intelligence and paperless service of poor logistics and customs inspection. And thirdly, the Chinese government will be further cooperative and opener to the world and implement the national initiative of Belt and Road. The maritime transportation is the most open sector in China, so that all countries should enhance global, regional, bilateral communication and cooperation of capital projects and businesses on all levels and of all kinds to achieve win-win effects. Okay, we move on to the countermeasures of shipping enterprises. So COVID-19 is an unprecedented global event that changes our production means and lifestyle and also changes the operation mode of enterprises. Shipping enterprises should, should closely track the changes of epidemic prevention and control measures of different countries. First, uh, they should innovate online business model. We have seen that various shipping lines strengthen promotion and publicity and offer innovative online services. For example, Musk Line offers online consulting, online booking, online bidding check, online payment, automatic charger, online bill flating reception, transmission, etc. So the virus case can be deemed as a catalyst that pushes forward the automation, intelligence, and information technology of shipping service. To some extent, it is a strong driving force for the metabolism 
of this old and traditional shipping industry, and only the fittest can survive. And secondly, uh, the shipping companies should extend their surface of the shipping industry chain. So through all round surfaces of land and sea transport, the container lines are shifting towards the role of logistic providers. The shipping enterprises in dilemma extend the surface of industry chain to downstream businesses or merge the logistic enterprises, the freight forwarders, the truck fleet, the warehouses. So smaller freight forwarders may find it more difficult to compete as the line operators extend both upstream and downstream businesses that offer online services. And thirdly, we will see a trend that the shipping alliances will further consolidate. So under the joint effect of COVID-19, the fuel oil price, the rate, and the sluggish macroeconomy, the container transport demand will definitely decline, which will cause pessimistic perception of the market. Even if the pandemic situation can be effectively controlled in the first quarter, most countries will be tumbling in economy recovery to the normal levels, and the transport demand of containerized goods is hard to recover too. So we suggest that container lines further enhance the alliance-based operation and collaboration that all market players take the same pace to reasonably adjust the carrying capacity so as to increase the loading rates of the vessels and stabilize the volatile freight rates. So frankly speaking, we are not quite op op optimistic about a container transport market in the upcoming several months. And the economy recovery depends on the efforts of both government and enterprises. But we are convinced that our human society is strong and smart enough to withstand any virus attack. So ladies and gentlemen, please stay healthy and stay strong. And tomorrow will be another day, definitely. Thank you, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Prof, for your great effort. Uh, I think that all presentations are uh, uh, coming up together with the same perspective and point of view. Thank you once again, Dr. Ju Yang Fing. Uh, we had five presentations. We started with uh, Domiata Port with uh, Admiral uh, Walid Awad. He gave us a view about the countermeasures they took in the port before, prior to the COVID and uh, through the outbreak and some of their uh, valuable recommendations and how the port were affected, uh, was affected with these measures and some uh, investment uh, projects that the Port Authority came up with. Thank you also. My sincere thanks for all our valuable speakers and attendees. And this is a, a global concept. Like Midport started to have a webinars, continuous webinars to get all ports together to participate in their periodically meetings to exchange points of views and experiences and so that all ports can discuss problems and challenges they face also, it's a, a very good brainstorming and uh, experience exchange and how we came up with the solutions and uh, 
this is this is the same concept uh, we offer in our webinars and as the professor uh, dr akram mentioned he talked about the future of our maritime transport uh, generally and today's webinar uh, talked specifically about uh, ports services next webinar will talk about how human resources and how how human resources will deal with this crisis through uh, ports by different measures the second presentation talked about covid-19 on uh, global maritime and its effect on the global uh, economy then uh, dr wan we uh, talked about maritime administration and service after covid-19 and its recession dr uh, mohammed awad uh, proposed solutions for marketing uh, of shipping services post covid-19 and then dr uh, young feng talked about some characteristics of container transport market after outbreak of covid-19 very valuable five presentations they all uh, are integrated together we have some questions i hope all the speakers are here first question is for admiral uh, walid awad what are the measures and efforts uh, from your valuable uh, port to coordinate uh, with the government of Domiata governorate to coordinate uh, how people work in the port for customers. about the coordination of all uh, parties in the port we had a very good uh, infrastructure of fiber cables uh, that connected all assistant sectors in the port together and all departments and we succeeded to get everyone connected from 2004 this uh, this was done through phases as uh, as all the programs i uh, presented has been accomplished before this mechanism is very strong and uh, by which we could achieve our work uh, we coordinate we are coordinating with every body with quarantine with container handling and uh, the logistic center uh, will facilitate more and we can uh, activate uh, the single window so clients can work from one place even not going to the logistics center he can uh, do his work from his cell phone even the employee can accomplish his work from uh, his cell phone from the applications we are going very fast in this direction thank you admiral walid that's real that uh, the Miata port is going fast on track in this direction another question to dr uh, young ming what are the efforts from the china ports 
to uh, to have uh, the movement of ships uh, to come to its normal uh, life. Dr. Youngming. Okay, and uh, Dr. Youngming. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, and uh, in my opinion, port is Sorry, not Doctor, uh, a... say again, please. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, 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 in my opinion, I, I think that port uh, itself is not an um, isolated uh, place because we, we know their transport uh, is, uh, is a system. It's a system, so the whole logistics uh, no, 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 no. of the Sorry, I can't uh, hear someone else's voice. Okay, uh, okay. go on, sir. Okay, uh, so uh, just uh, during the uh, worst time in China, I mean the end of January and uh, the beginning of February, uh, the traffic system, I mean not only the port itself, because you know, the handling of containers and other cargoes in, in port itself is almost an in, uh, independent place, but the operation of the port might be uh, seriously affected by the collection and distribution system. So uh, just from January to February in uh, many leading ports in China because of the uh, limitation of the movement of people, for example, the drivers of container trucks, because that kind of limitation, the operation of port uh, was very, very seriously affected. And uh, of course, as far as I know that uh, in some provinces, for example, in Zhejiang and also in, in Shanghai and Jiangsu, the government provides a lot of services, for example, to bring the drivers uh, from their hometown. You know, uh, just in the end of January, it's the uh, Chinese New Year. Many, many drivers just uh, went back to their hometown and they, they could not get back to the, the ports. So many lo local governments did a lot of effort to just uh, bring these drivers back to, to the uh, Port city. That is one point, and uh, also some something uh, like uh, the uh, the quarantine restrictions of uh, vessels and uh, crew members. Uh, to a certain extent, also occurred in several ports in China, and uh, the government also rearranged some procedures, some some criteria to uh, facilitate the. Uh, arrival and the departure of international ships and the uh, quarantine inspection of international uh, crew members. And uh, we also uh, made several, I think, very helpful arrangements for uh, not only the goods, but also the people. Sometimes we, we found that the normal operation of port uh, people maybe are more important than, than the goods. So, so far as I know that our government did a lot for not only just focusing on, on the goods, containers or bulk cargoes, but also more attention we paid to, to people in imports. Uh, I mean, um, uh, not only imports and uh, people are on board. Okay. I, ho I hope my reply is satisfactory. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you so much. That was a very uh, good answer, sir. Uh, we appreciate your uh, participation. Thank you so much and uh, keep up uh, with us. Another question on, are there any legislatives for uh, uh, people, uh, employees who are working in the maritime uh, sector?
Uh, in, in China, uh, we, uh, a question is, uh, are there any other uh, uh, rules and legislations for employees uh, uh, working uh, in uh, the ports in China other than the ILO uh, rules? Uh, Dr. Ruan. Uh, Dr. Ruan, uh, this yeah. question was uh, for you. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the question must be for me. Um, thank you very much for the uh, good question um, about the further legislations by China I mean, for the employees, other than the IMO and the ILO, etc. etc. Um, First of all, I want to say, uh, yes, I Chinese uh, government is acting <clears throat> for the group of the people in the maritime circle, um, according to the IMO ILO guidelines, first of all. And uh, secondly, of course, uh, the government uh, would like to localize, I mean, um, the uh, the to make to tailor make the uh, so the, the employees so uh, but up to now um, there's uh, uh, the, the the standards uh, is mainly for the um, COVID uh, 2019s no further uh, and also additional requirements for the employees in the maritime circle. And uh, by the way, you know that when we talk about the maritime employees, um, maybe we have to clarify or um, deal uh, with it uh, differently for those people working ashore and also for those uh, seafarers, I mean, working on board vessels. But anyway, generally speaking, there are no uh, further uh, special uh, regulations i mean uh, for 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 the employees we are acting in the framework of uh, basically imo and ilo yeah hello mr chairman thank you so much uh, prof uh, it's cleared thank you Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Muhammad Awad. Uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Awad, uh, are there any uh, plans for uh, the maritime market. Do you hear me, Dr. Mohamed Awad? Dr. Mohamed, how are you as well? <laughs> the 
the current situation does not cover what about the expectations there are three expectations I've referred to one of them the remarkable improvement that happened in China second economic motivation steps to support the fleet of its own the third and the most important the expectation to find a cure for COVID-19 the second question is are there any future plans we are optimistic to overcome this crisis are there any uh, future plans for I may talk about the strategy of the company we have enhancement new activities we are moving in a different way there is a trend that spread out there are some companies that yeah that that hire its ships for some investors that has no relation to the maritime market I want for example a ship with a specific specification yeah the investors the investor takes it without any crew he is responsible for for everything but only those who hire those ships want to have financial income there has been a decrease in the market of the shipping companies but it's not available right now for investors so the alternative is to to buy when the income decreases it reflects on the market if yeah if it's worthy a ship in 2017 or 16 if it is if it is something like 30 or over 30 million dollars now it decreases at the at a rate of 30 percent may be sold at 26 million dollar it's a piece of advice for the market that but I think this crisis is not is not going to be permanent and uh, hoping to find a cure for COVID-19 so we passed through the worst times I don't think we are going to face uh, uh, a worse period the last question for uh, Dr. Zhu Yangfeng Dr. the performance of the transport of the ships most of the most of the port uh, customers they are asking to hire is there anything the same uh, 
Could you please uh, repeat that question? Here we see the network band bandwidth is low. So, so pardon, please. I just want to say one. Sorry, we, we, we cannot hear you. Uh, yes, doctor, do you hear me? Oh, uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, uh, the question is, uh, uh, are there any um, downsizing for, cost downsizing for uh, the cost, uh, um, uh, for the cost of containers and to overcome the crisis, the impact of the crisis? Mm. Okay, uh, uh, it might take a bit more time because uh, uh, Dr. Gu will explain that in Chinese and, and, and I will help her to translate from Chinese into English. Please go on. Uh,是的。班门公司的环境的全面就说到了,就是疫情的这个影响还是比较大的嘛。那么就是班门公司在这种疫情影响下怎么来应对 首先他也说到了,就是说这个经济效益不好啊之类的,如果出现这种资金上比较紧张,那么是不是可以有这个对船舶这一块,一个是船舶的造船计划现在在有减缓,第二个是就是对这个船舶可以售后回租,就像太平
And we have also seen that the container lines, uh, though they are competitors, they work more closely and try to maximize the utilization rates of their vessels. And even if they cancel many voyages, uh, they did not reduce the port coverages. And uh, when talking about their future plans, I think the container lines will uh, more utilize the novel technologies and, and, and the more ITs, IT uh, approaches to improve their surface quality. So uh, that's the answers for this question. Thank you, thank you, doctor. Thank you, Dr. Yangfeng. Let's open the line for uh, Dr. Henny. the maritime expert And he gave us, uh, the first speaker gave us a very optimistic and comfortable uh, numbers, but the opposite happened uh, through the second speaker. Yeah. And there was the opinion of fears of this pandemic. We want to know that the yeah we want we want to know the real truth because China is one of the most important centers of production. We want to form an overall view because uh, some op this is really a logic uh, question. The first speaker was uh, of an optimistic point of view, but Dr. Yang Men, it was an overall point of view on the impact of COVID-19 in general on the maritime movement. And it was an optimistic opinion that uh, China has overcome this COVID-19 First, 
yeah, he talked about, in his presentation, he talked about in February, there was an increase of uh, the movement. But, but the second one was talking about the, the bad movement of the containers. It was, uh, it was more accurate point. It, uh, the second presentation was more accurate than the first one. So we want to know the difference between the two presentations, please, in short. Thank you, Mr. Henny, the maritime expert. Thank you for following following up with us. Yeah, you always transform the point of view of the Institute. I want to give you some statistics that we prepared uh, regarding the webinar of today. It will, uh, it will appear on the screen right now. The number of participants, 198 participants in this webinar. The maritime and the Egyptian ports, uh, I'm sorry for that. In the, in the maritime, 32 uh, participants. Arab Academy for Science and Technology, 17 participants from journalism there were three participants for those postgraduate studies 11 uh, 11 students or participants for arab countries there was there were 30 uh, participants 16 from saudi arabia five from from iraq four from Libya, three from Yemen, and two participants from Jordan, Kingdom of Jordan. Honestly, as an academy, as an institute, we have a, a prestigious relation with all Arab countries through training to all the employees in the Arab ports, We continue to uh, convey this message either online through the webinar that the Institute takes place in. I want to note uh, to the next web webinar on 17th June in two weeks time through the series of webinars specialized in the impact of Corona, COVID-19. Next time, the webinar will be more specific. Talk about the human factor in ports to face, to confront this crisis. It will be on the 17th of June this month. Surely, there was a Google form you used to if there is if there is any recommendation you want to send because we are going to form these recommendations and to send it off to decision makers through the email of the institute i want or i'd like to thank you all the members of the webinar see you next webinar and I want to refer to the international cooperation before the crisis or through the crisis. There is, we always do diploma with international ports in Valencia, the biggest uh, port of containers in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, Valencia Institute Foundation. It will be on the 9th of June. Diploma divided into three days 
that will take place in the training institute. We try to uh, put a convenient title for the crisis and how countries try to face such COVID. It's a, it's a common uh, diploma with credited certificates. It's six day period, three hours on each day. Thank you so much for your attention, for your concern. We are waiting for coming workshops. Thank you from the port of the Arab Academy for Science and Technology. And thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you very much for offering offering this opportunity. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Prof. Thank, Thank you very you much. Bye bye. See you again, inshallah. Bye bye. Bye bye.